Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 158, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. We're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, everyone. Hi, Marwa. Great to see you again. I took last week off because I was a little busy. Um, truth is, I was a little busy this week as well. So um, the tip's mostly on you today, Marwa, as usual. Yes. yes. Uh, but this tip come, came about because in the last week, we have twice at Insum needed the same kind of functionality. Uh, and and um, I think folks are gonna be really interested in A, the functionality that, that we're gonna talk about that we needed, but also um, the, the um, hey, do you know, the, the need to be careful when you're doing anything like this, um, because this came up and, and, uh, and, and like I said, I think people, are going to run into this all the time. I'm going to recommend that if you not watched episode 38 of the show, you do go back and watch that as well. We'll talk more about it. Um, maybe at the end, I'll tell you, you don't have to watch it because we spent enough time talking about it. But Mara, let's introduce it by, by talking about the piece of functionality, the kind of functionality that we were looking for. Um, this is actually a long intro, intro to the little tip. Uh, so altogether, we're probably going to end up spending eight or nine minutes giving a long intro and a short tip. Or, uh, but but let's let's go ahead and give the intro. What's what is it you were trying to accomplish uh, at you and, and Ender as well this week? Yes. So I'm going to share my screen, and here I have an interactive report. I want to make some filters on this interactive report, and then process the data that are uh, the result of- No, oh, and I look like it's pretty important that you get the right people because you're either gonna give raises to everyone or you're gonna fire everyone. Am I right about that? Exactly, so I'm going to Those filter the... the report and then either give them a raise or fire them all. Oh, well, okay, so let's get the right people, huh? So, <clears throat> so the key here is you spend time filtering the report and then when you click one of those buttons, you need to know who's in that report. And it's not an interactive grid, it's an interactive report, right? Yes. So, so interactive grids, we have access to the data in a particular way. We could use the get IG data plugin or something like this, but because it's an interactive report, we really, we really need to go, and, and it's not even necessarily all on the page because it's paginated, all those things. We need access to that, either the underlying query that was last run or the underlying data, something like that. <coughs> how, how do we get, how do we get that underlying data? Okay, so uh, to do that, I used um, the get, get last viewed report ID, and then I used the open query context. I passed the report ID that I got and the region ID, the app ID. And so this- Okay, slow down just a second for me. So it's Apex region open query context. And what does that give me when I use that? So you, you've looked up the region ID from Apex page regions. I get all of that. But, but what do you, what does this open query context give me? So it gives us the information and the data about the last viewed report, the last refresh re report that ran. Okay, and then, all right. Yes. So, and then I will do a loop through those data, so through uh, those records and do whatever process I want to do on those records. So right here, you would either give a raise or give a, um, or, or give a, uh, or fire everyone, right? Yeah. Right. In our case, we're we're going to show the we're going to show the records on the screen with a dynamic action. But that's what you would do here. Um, we're gonna we would do these things. All right. I see line thirty eight. What was line thirty eight? That's Apex IR get report. Yes, this one would I would use this one to get the query behind this uh, last field report. Ah, right. So you could instead of instead of looping through. The query context, you could rerun the query yourself um, and with the bind variables and so forth. Um, so exactly. a couple of different options on how you would process this. But the key element is each of these get uh, the get open query context and the get IR report. They both give us the last time that report was run. So that's perfect because we'll have all the query parameters and everything. So let, let's take a look and see what we get when we when we click our dynamic action. Yes, let me change the filter here and we will click the button get IR info and see 
what information do we get? So I will choose Ford as a manager. And here, when I hit the button, I will get the query. So that's the also, query that got generated out of that. And it tells us the bind variable was Ford. And we see all the right employees. So these are all the employees that we're going to fire. Right. We're going to fire all these people. Okay. It's, it's rough. We want to make sure this list is right. We don't want to fire the wrong people, right? Okay. Exactly. Right. So if you do this, right, if you do just what you did so far, um, it's going to, it's going to work. It, it, it's going to test. It's going to go through QA. Everybody's going to be super happy. And then it's going to go to production. And if I'm your user, what's going to happen? You are, you are the user. So I think you would open the same page in a new window. I would, and I would compare who do I want to fire and who do I want. Own. Yeah, right. I, I'd put them side by side and I would say, oh. who do I want to fire and who, who do I want to give a raise to? So I would do this. I'd spend a little bit of time. I would get all the right people. I would fire the right people. So, okay. So on the left, I've already decided those are the folks that I'm going to fire, right? All those, everybody that whose manager is Ford, you're getting fired. On the right, mm -hmm. who am I going to give a raise to? We can so, change the filter, give a raise okay, to people so, with manager and we don't have that, but let's suppose <laughs> King maybe. Okay. So King, all these people. So all the people on the right are going to get a raise and all the people on the left are going to get, get fired. fired. Okay. So now if I go click that fire all button, if I were to do that, Mara, what would happen? Let's see. Let get let's get the information related okay. to that. Uh, I just it's, fired everybody that I wanted to give a raise to. Oh wow. That shouldn't yeah. happen. <laughs> that shouldn't happen. I think I think these people would, would agree um, that that shouldn't happen. Uh, so the, the the key here is that we're relying on something that's stored in the database the last time that query was run. And we have two windows. We, we, we can't rely on what's in the database. Um, right. So we need to All find right. a one for this, right? We need, a, we need to find a solution for this, for sure. Um, and we, yeah. I think we cannot stop our end users from opening the same page in a different window because yeah, certainly not easy. There is a way to do it. I mean, that is that would be a, one approach would be to, to put in to do something to keep users from opening in a new tab. That would certainly be an approach. Um, short of that, though, we have to come up with a solution. Now, in a minute, after we're done giving this solution, I'm going to talk a little bit about episode 38 and we'll talk a little bit about that. But for now, how could you how could we solve this, Marwa? So we created a page item on this page which is hidden and each time that that item has different value when we open a new window and that's because when when the report is run it's refreshed when we apply a filter we will get all the information related to that report to that filtered data and store it somewhere in the collection along with the so let's take a look this is enough to refresh and this is like the idea of how to do it. So this, this number is a random value and we create the collection using that generated number and then we populate the collection based on the query of the interactive report. Right, so we use all that code that, that you had before and whenever the report refreshes, we you're randomly generating a M number, a million, one in a million, right? You could do this a different way, but this is a one in a million number. You can make it one in a billion. It's, a, you know, it's not going to conflict and, and you store all of it. And so then when you actually process it, let's go to your process. You don't yes. process it so anymore have... based upon the last run. Instead, you're processing it based upon what's in the collection. Exactly. Right? So, so you've created, the, let's take a look at this P32 IR tab ID. That's a hidden item. And let's take a look at 
the, the dynamic action that you did with that again. So, so we have this hidden item and whenever the report refreshes, every yes. single time the report refreshes, we set the value of that hidden item with the yes. random, with the random value that we get. Right. And so this means that we're every time that report refreshes, we're creating a collection, we're dumping stuff into it. It's not, it's not beautiful, but it's going to get the right people fired and the right people get given raises to, right? And I think that's right. that's the key. Um, these collections will get purged out. You can we can purge them in lots of different ways, but but the key element is to think about this. Think about this: the fact that somebody can open it in a new tab and so forth. Now, Marwa, we tried a different solution um that didn't work uh and and i I'm, I'm thinking other folks might say oh why don't i just do this what was that solution that we tried the solution is that whenever we click on the button right before getting all the information related to this interactive report we do an extra action which is refreshing the report so it would be the last viewed report and then we get the information of that report Mm -hmm. How'd that go? It did not work. <laughs> Simply, it did not. So, and the reason is that the refresh action that we are doing is supposed to refresh this region and make it the last report viewed. It's actually done in the reverse way. It's getting the last viewed report and putting it on the screen. So we're getting the filters from the second window back on the yeah, so let's just show it so let's uh let's put them side by side again and we'll just hit that go, the go button and we'll see what what happens here so yes i will add the action quickly which is a refresh well no let's just show the two regions we can just hit the go button you don't have to add the whole action just just show the two the two pages side by side and we can it's it becomes pretty obvious okay so on the left we have king on the right we have king if you hit the go button on both of them right now, you get the same thing. But if we switch it on the right from King to anything else, apply, right? You go to forward. And now on the right, if you just hit the go button, it doesn't give you the, it doesn't give you the, the criteria of this page. It gives you the criteria of the other page. So if you hit go, it just switches to forward, right? And so a, a, the region refresh would do the exact same thing. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't apply the new things. Um, so unfortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So that is a solution. And I think the solution that most people are going to do in, in a reasonable amount of time. Okay. Exactly. Yes. And so just to make, uh, make use of all the, the, the time we have, um, Episode 38, um, in episode 38, I introduced a plugin called the Minimizer plugin. And this plugin solves the problem entirely because what it does is it makes use of this feature in Apex called Apex Clone Session. And what it does is anytime a user opens the application in a new tab, it always creates a new session for the user and clones the old session. And so the sessions don't conflict. Anything you do on the right session is actually a different Apex session than everything you would do on the left session. And you're good. Everything is great. Um, and that plugin, I think, um, was great. And I, I used it many times. The, and then none of this is an issue, right? Because your sessions don't overlap. It, it, and, and there are a lot, a lot, a lot of places. I, I recommend people look at episode 38 for this because um, this is this is just an inherent issue with the way Apex developers think about it. They think that the database, that the session state stored in the database on the server is valid, but it's often not valid if a user does this. And so what this, this plugin does is it, it automatically creates a new session. The problem with the plugin is that it doesn't work for friendly URLs. It only works for Oh, am I back? Did I lose? 
I know I, I, I just, my, my connection seemed to, to hiccup. Um, so but, you uh, were talking about the problem of that plugin that you created to clone yes. the session. It only works with friendly URLs. And so okay. my question to everyone, uh, all of our vast viewers, both of you, is, is this valuable, valuable enough that I should spend my time to write the plugin again so that it works for friendly URLs? Um, I can do it. I know I can do it. But it, these things take time. They take a lot of testing. And if nobody's going to use it, why would I do it? Um, and in some ways, I feel like this should just be something that Apex handles, right? That Apex, when yeah. you open it in a new tab, there's something here for this. Uh, um, and, and no developer, developers don't think about it. You don't find out about it until some user does it in production. And usually it's something innocuous, not a big deal. You get a little bug, but sometimes it could be a whole bunch of people got fired when they should have gotten raises. Um, yes. And so, uh, oh, Rich, I have I have submitted this to Apex Ideas. I have talked with the Apex development team. Um, generally speaking, uh, they think it's hard, and they 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 don't have enough they they don't have enough movement in the community to do it. So there's already an Apex idea for this. I'll say that I can I can look up what the Apex idea is. And I'll I'll put that in the chat notes. Um, but my question is: Is there enough of a is there enough of a movement that I should spend the time to to write this plugin and make it available for the community? Um, Maro, I don't know what your take is. What do you think? I think yes, it's important to complete this okay. plugin. All right. Well, it sounds like you just got yourself a new uh, a new assignment. New assignment, right? <laughs> Um, all right, well, Marwa, uh, I, uh, maybe you and I should just, just take the note to, to start working on this. But if we can get a little bit of a movement behind us, it might get us to get it done a little faster. And, and, um, yes. and there we go. Um, I hope that the, the show was easy enough to follow. It's a, a little bit of a, a challenge. It's a difficult topic, um, but I'd love to hear people's feedback. Uh, Marwa, anything else from you on this? No, so I would like to thank you, Anton, for all of these explanations. And like you said, it's important to see these kind of tests, like seeing the end user opening a new tab and thinking that this is a, a whole different session from the other one makes you think that maybe we need more backgrounds and solutions to handle those situations. So thank you for, for all of the information that would help a lot. All right. Well, um, folks have wasted a perfectly good 18 minutes listening to this. Uh, I will let them get out of here. If you like the show, like the show, um, comment today for sure, if you think about it, and uh, tell your friends about it. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>